On the second session of the webinar, Advances in Aerospace Materials from Team 2020, a group for students, entrepreneurs, and society. Hope you guys have got good information from the last session about micro manufacturing in aerospace industries. We have received your valuable feedbacks and preview of previous sessions. Most of them were full of thankful appreciation, and few of them were also about suggestion on few things, which we will be improving in this session. Once again, introducing myself, I am Moaz Hussain, CEO of Team 2020, with our valuable resource person, Professor Sovik Brahma Hota from Techno India University, Kolkata. And the topic for today's session is rapid prototyping in space application. Yes, sounds great. So without delaying or taking more of your time, I would like to request Professor Sovik Brahma Hota to take over the session and facilitate us with useful information on rapid prototyping in space application. Sir, you can begin. Thank you, Moj. On the second day of this three days webinar series, I do welcome all the participants to have an informative session on rapid prototyping in aerospace application. Before opening my lecture, I am to express my heartiest regard to Professor A. B. Vikarasan, who was my guru, who always constantly gives me inspiration and his blessings to lead me to the path of academic and this research arena in engineering studies. In my college days, I am privileged by an, his enthusiastic approach towards every student, how he ignites the minds of the budding engineers with his innovative ideas. So let us start today's session. I'm just opening that PPT. This is our today's topic. Rapid prototyping in space application. It sounds really exciting, and I am also excited to share some information uh, which I experienced in the research areas uh, with this rapid prototyping technique. So, today's agenda are like this one overview of rapid prototype technology, then the various case studies of aerospace research. And then the current research and what are the future steps and scope of research in this rapid prototyping technology. So optimizing the transition from the concept to full scale model and beyond, how do modern business test their ideas effectively? So we have to think about that. Here's how the first prototyping technique power innovation, how the ideas are basically realized and they are basically getting to the real models. So the manufacturing realm is, is unique is in their way and many viable routes from an idea to a market to the product. Although the fabrication techniques that get innovated from point A to point B vary widely. There are few constant trends, so they are existing in this market. So for massive companies, huge companies and the inventors and also for the entrepreneur, the name of the game is minimizing the time to create object. So we have to think about how to create the viable prototype. So for that reason, to accelerate the type of prototyping, and to accelerate the process of manufacturing this prototyping, we have to empower the fabrication to leverage a variety of production and testing methodologies as they hone their ideas. So 
what is this additive manufacturing technology rapid prototyping refers to number of independent strategies that dramatically reduce the fabrication time indeed to create full scale three dimensional cells so when i say rapid prototyping that means nothing but this additive manufacturing technology faster prototyping only came into promise in early 1980s and with the development of the technology that could quickly translate digital design in physical real world object before then things like vehicle mockup were typically created by artists such as sculptors who made the partial scale replicas from clay the rise of quick prototyping method reflects a number of relevant factors and for one thing use of computers as a industrial tool was gaining steam as these systems grew more readily accessible and understandable so we can see this rapid prototype is nothing but use of additive manufacturing technology where one layer at a time is been made and then we have to add up another layer on it then layer by layer we are manufacturing a product so there are many ways to do that according to the engineering materials available for us so for plastics we generally use stereolithography this stereolithography is the first proposed rapid prototyping technique early in 1980s and then also for plastic we are using huge filament deposition or fused deposition modeling technique so this fused deposition modeling technique nowadays gaining more popularity then for metal as well as plastic we can use powder bait or sls like selective laser splintering process and then only for the metals we can use some plasma deposition and also some spray technique like metal spray technique. so if we talk about stereolithography as i have already told that it is invented earlier in 1980s so this stereolithography process is involving the use of liquid polymers this chemical mixture carefully chosen for their ability to photopolymerization that means the resin locally cured by uv light so chemical bonds when they are exposed to certain wavelengths of light they fuse together machinery connected to a vat of fluid that rise the bell platform and the liquid will be in the reservoir so if we have look into some videos of the stereolithography we can really understand what is this process actual so this is the animated uh, presentation of the stereolithography so here we can see a light emitting device selectively illuminates the resin in specific spots to form a harder layer from below sla light emitters may take the form of laser that cure a single point at a time but the digital light processing or dlp that is the advanced form for the stereolithography that use projector to complete an entire then this is another process of stereolithography where we can see in our lab how do we produce the dental transplant so we can see this video this is a live video where we are producing this dental transplant so that for the oxalo or dental transplant we are using this kind of prototypes using uh, by uh, by formed with the help of stereolithography then this fused filament fabrication or more precisely fused deposition molding also another technique to produce this 3d printing object with the help of plastics so fused deposition modeling is occurs with most plastic printing 3d printer we know around 2009 onwards makerbots 
the producer of this 3D printing machine produces this huge deposition modeling small machines which are very much handy and that can be used in our household purpose also. And nowadays, like printer boards are just manufacturing some this rapid prototyping machines which are just below 20,000 rupees. So we can have that machine in our household and we can just use that thing to make our own product, our own customized product, which can be a mobile cover, which can be a small corner holder, which can be uh, our glasses holder and the pen stand and all the small, small thing we can do. And we have a research investigation where it is proved that for producing that small part, it is quite economical uh, than the conventional products which are available in market. So this is how that few deposition technique has been made. So you can see this machine extrude or squeeze out the thin beads of plastic at sufficiently high temperature to partially liquefy the material. As the plastic cools on a purpose made bed plate, it solidifies. So similar techniques enable the creation of prototyping using everything from glass and ceramics. Now we have to shift for the powder bed technology. So in powder bed technology, you can see various processes like selective laser sintering, electron melting. So if we consider the selective laser sintering process, there we have the most costlier process, but we can make any kind of metal product with this selective laser sintering technique. So this selective laser sintering is the most popular rapid prototyping technique used with the fabrication of highly flexible 3D structure from powdered polymers. The printed structure are highly quality and complex geometry. So you can see this is the process. The process of the selective laser sintering is shown in this video of our lab. The process of this selective laser sintering comprises powder deposition and solidification followed by the movement of the building platform to last layer of the material is deposited and sintered. The fusion of each individual metal part with the help of this laser is known as the sintering process. The solidification of the layers occurs by the laser source and the scanning of the model contour also occurs by the laser beam with the help of some softwares. Now moving to the next process, this is direct metal deposition process. In direct metal deposition process, the laser beam and the powder spray are focused and scan the substrate to deposit the metal. So it has some key advantage like the size only limited by the range of motion of nozzle of the robot and the disadvantages are there like fine details are not possible. So the produced part have rough surface area. So this is the pictorial representation of the direct metal deposition in our lab. So you can see the laser is been is been injected and is incinerated on the metal powder surface and then metal get fused. So all kind of metallic materials can be processed by this laser metal deposition technology. Among the most common are steel and aluminium and also AL2024 which is widely used in our aircraft applications. But very technically material are also available such as nickel based alloy like in Cornell, titanium, gold, and copper also. Now moving to the advantage of this rapid prototyping technique. One of the most important point we can consider that is the speed. The most apparent benefit of this rapid prototyping is the speed. 
after the part or the product is produced you can have the part design and shipped and tested in a reduced time frame so this is the very much good indicative advantage of this rapid prototyping technique the next one is efficiency in production cost so if you want cost and time efficiency while manufacturing the product in a large amount we will need rapid prototyping using 3d printing or additive manufacturing with cad software it will produce only the number of products required while being true to the design this method is very quick and cost effective moving to the next point it converts design idea into model this is a very viable and very lucrative point to be discussed rapid prototyping is used by manufacturer and the professional to convert the 3d idea into physical form with a physical representation of the concept we can have an idea of overall design and the property of the product the last point that we can discuss that is the reduced costly design cost rapid prototyping reduces the costly design cost another of its benefit is that multiple feedback of the prototype we can get with the cad software we can make the design modification based on the input of the customer so we are getting the feedback from the customer accordingly we are changing the design of this product which are made with the help of rapid prototyping technique now we have to discuss about some disadvantage of this rapid prototyping technique as a process in our manufacturing we see in our conventional manufacturing process also there are many so we are having numerous amounts of advantages but they do have some disadvantage in this rapid prototyping technique so the quality control is a big matter of concern although many eyes can view the prototype design quality control is still a significant downside for rapid prototyping whether the prototype is outsourced or made in house the prototype is always created based on the specification when we are producing something with a limited period quality control is often neglected that has been experienced by us also so this often leads to the low quality design making and prototyping phase when a true quality check is been neglected the next point is the cost of design failure so this cost of design failure would be negligible if we produce something in a very small scale but for complex output like more complicated project than like uh, having some years or some months to complete so using this rapid prototyping technique it is too much impossible to accomplish that project the bottom line would have to suffer because of this rapid prototyping in that case the last point as the advantage sorry at the disadvantage of this rapid prototyping technique is cost of huge production when we are considering small amount of production that kind that time this rapid prototyping technique can be very beneficial but when we are produced in a large number that time this rapid prototyping technique obviously add some additional cost all the rapid prototyping is now smaller affordable and more sustainable it still present an additional expense to the companies but improvement on the 3d printing like developing small and portable rapid prototyping system that can cater to smaller business even if the companies outsource their rapid prototyping it will be still a added cost to their production so we can see from this curve the traditional manufacturing technique as the number of units has been increased for the higher number of production the cost of the traditional manufacturing technique that is the blue line has been reduces 
But in case of our 3D printing or rapid prototyping technique, there is a constant red line which shows this cost of the production does not that much depend on the number of production. So for production of small number of parts, it is beneficial though production of a large quantity is will hamper the production process as it is it increase the cost. Now the interesting part. The aerospace applications of this rapid prototyping technique. We will discuss all the things like models display in wind channel and the side part, factoring tool, then propulsion, spare part, UOVs, stitch crop, and all the structures. How this rapid prototyping technique is widely used in these places of aerospace applications. So we can see some models that is the display model that we use in our wind channel testing. Among the most interesting and significant application in the aerospace sector developed thanks to the collaboration of European tilt rotor with the wind tunnel technology corporation in 2007. So in a test at the Lockheed Martin, we know Lockheed Martin are having very good wind channel, high speed wind channel, HSWT. So they demonstrate the acceptable data quality and test to test data repeatability with the geometrical similar steel and anovelium model. So rapid prototyping model is for approximately a quarter of the cost and fraction of the time required of all the metal high fidelity model. We can see this is Robert Billy from Lockheed Martin who has also done some experience in wind tunnel modeling. So these aircraft structure like D8 aircraft, we can see that is uh, this D8 aircraft. So D8 aircraft boundary layer investigation is a very viable research proposal and that has been carried out where we can see the dynamic benefits of boundary layer investigation was quantified by a direct back to back comparison of non boundary layer propulsion installation on the D8 aircraft at 1 is to 11 scale. So we can see the icing test for the wind tunnel. The icing test has been carried out in a icing wind tunnel. In that test, what we are doing, we are creating uh, just we are spraying some amount of water by an upwind spray array and ice being to form on the test surface within the second and after a typical 30 to 45 minute test, the ice set several inches thick form on the respective wing sections. So this icing test is carried out if in higher altitude the ice formation is the matter. So we have to test that model before it is applied to that higher altitude application. Then the typhoon. We know this typhoon aircraft. This Eurofighter typhoon is the world most advanced swing roll combat aircraft providing simultaneously deployable air to air and air to surface capabilities. The Eurofighter Typhoon is a twin engine Gunnard Delta Wing multi road fighter and it was designed by consortium of Airbus and BAE system and Leonardo. Now, moving to the next slide, you can see here some flight test parts for Evector aircraft. As you know, Evector Aero Technique is a Chase aircraft manufacturing based in Chase Republic. The company produces wide range of light sport aircraft and training aircrafts and advanced ultralight aircrafts. So they are having some aircrafts like Evector VUT 100 Cobra, Evector EV 55 Outbreak, Evector EPO's electric aircraft. Now this Evector Aerotronic is deploying 3D printing technology. That is the rapid prototyping technology to produce a 9 to 14 passenger twin engine turboprop engine 
aircraft that is EV-55 Outback. It is quite interesting. The drag reduction process in C-17 aircraft. So this is also a flight test part where we are deploying this 3D printing technology. Since micro vanes are bonded to each side of the aft fuselage of the C-17 Gobmaster for phase 3 research, 4 and 5 in C-17 drag reduction program, which is managed by Air Force Research Laboratory. So the Lockheed Martin installed some combination of laser positioned uh, attachment we can see here that is built with the help of laser sintering that will be deployed to that aircraft and during the test we can see it has a good bonding the drag reduction parts are having good bonding with the aircraft main fuselage and the bonding simplifies the installation and more importantly leaves the aircraft in its pre-test condition after removal at the end of the flight test program. Very interesting to see how Airbus 330neo static cone fin tip has been manufactured with the help of rapid prototyping technique. So we know the use of static cone tip. The aircraft has a sensor that measures air gutter. Two of the most important which are the pitot probe and the static probe. So we can see here how this has been attached with the tail of the aircraft. The pitot probe measures the dynamic pressure of the air, which increases as the speed increases. We know the static port measures the air around the aircraft, around the aircraft fuselage. The difference between the two is to determine the speed of the aircraft, and also the static is used to determine the altitude. So these parts, the sensor parts, and the static cone also manufactured with the help of rapid prototyping in case of Airbus 330neo. This is the flight test part of helicopter wind shield, which also made with the help of fuse deposition modeling. And we can see this very rapidly, you can manufacture this kind of parts and it has a good strength and it requires very less time to manufacture this kind of product. We can have some holders, some corner protector for our radio navigation instruments in aircrafts, which can be made with the help of this rapid prototyping check. Now we know jigs, guides, and checks. These are very essential for manufacturing and also in machining purpose. So when we are assembling some aircrafts, that time we need some wide amount of machining, like we have to drill some holes in a series. That time we are using some jigs because jigs is a good tool guiding device and also it holds the specimen. So that jig can be easily manufactured with the help of this 3D prototyping. That is the rapid prototyping or 3D printing technique. You can see A20 bonnet, with A10, sorry, A10 bonnet has been made with the help of this rapid prototyping and then T38 floor panel jig and drill guides also. Airbus 380 wiring guide also. That wiring, that electrical wiring guide that has made with the help of this rapid prototyping technique. Moving to the next slide, we can see the tooling also have a good example. It is also a good example of rapid prototyping application as the largest 3D printed object in the world is nothing but 777X wing tool. Boeing partnered with US Department of Energy to create a tool to use to build the folding wing tip for forthcoming aircraft that is 777X airplane. The wing trim and drill tool is now the world's largest solid 3D printed item certified by the Guinness World Record. The tool represents the Boeing latest achievement in 3D printing and also it is a composite wing scheme for drilling and measuring the Boeing new St. Louis Composite Center of Excellence, where Boeing is designing and fabricating wing edge and empanage parts of this 777X aircraft. How our question is that? Is it possible or is it happening really? Because whatever you see, do not believe that thing. Only you have to investigate the research data. You have to go through the research papers. 
then only you can understand how this process this rapid prototyping process has been used widely in our aerospace and aircraft applications so here are some data like boeing commercial airplanes are currently flying 25000 additive manufacturing part and f15 and f8 fleets have around 40000 even in boeing 787 they contain 30 additive manufacturing part and most of them are like air ducts and then exhaust manifolds and some engine parts also so you can see some air ducts in f18 aircraft Boeing 787, some galley equipment and laboratory equipment and F-35 we see some manifolds is been made with the help of this rapid prototyping and for Bell 429 aircraft that is our helicopter for that also we are using this air duct which has been made with the help of rapid prototype now we can see some interior and brackets this is some interior design for a350 aircrafts where more than 500 parts we can see is been made with the help of this rapid prototyping techniques now the application of rapid prototyping in propulsion area or more precise the area of aircraft engines so we can see g90 this is a very good engine g introduced this composite fan blade for this engine for the first time and measuring more than four feet long and weighing less than 50 pound g fan blade is made from carbon fibers and all these things are manufactured with the help of rapid prototyping fuse deposition modeling and selective laser sintering process where we are using the epoxy matrix that delivers double the spring and one third the weight of the titanium and g90 that fan blades uniquely curved design makes it larger lighter more aerodynamic than the traditional titanium blades for reduced engine weight and low fuel burn plus the aerodynamic design allows the g90 fan blade to pull large amount of air into the engine makes it whiter and more efficient while generating equivalent and while more thrust. Now in case of aircraft 737 MAX, Boeing 737 MAX, the engine is G leap engine. So here again G engines are there. So that is G leap engine. So why I took this example because they showed in research they have made, GE have made 30,000 additive manufactured part of fuel injecting nozzle of their G lip engine with the help of 3D printing technology. They are directly using that file using layers of fine metal powder and they are using electron beam to fuse those metal powder. And by this way, they are manufacturing this fuel nozzle well injection nozzle and it is really a great mark for them under the additive manufacturing method the number of parts in a single fuel nozzle tip was reduced from about 20 pieces previously welded together to a whole piece so previously in conventional method when they are manufacturing this fuel injection nozzle they are integrating 20 parts into that thing but now we can make with the single part itself which cut the weight of this nozzle by 25 percent that is much more interesting fact in this research now we can see the turbine casing of f15k aircraft here uh, they are using g129 engine you can see also in case of trained xwb97 engine and their bearing also which is used in aircraft 350 most of the cases the cost has been reduced from $34,000 to $2,050, dollars 2550 So how much reduction in cost if we just concentrate in this area? And the other thing is that the manufacturing time, the lead time, that is from 40 to 60 days, it has reduced to 20 days. So how rapidly it has been made, manufactured, we can observe the thing.
some other examples like gct7 that are integrating previously 900 parts now they are integrating only 16 three printed parts which is used in cessna danieli denali aircraft and in gp7000 there are 50 parts became single three printing part so there are many for example where the much more parts are there in conventional manufacturing and machining techniques but nowadays with the help of this rapid prototyping and 3d printing we are using within some smaller parts or within a single part which takes much more less time and also reducing the cost and also increasing the efficiency of that part now some smaller parts also for a 300 aircraft airbus 310 aircraft crew seat bracket seat belts molds and dc10 aircraft air ducts that also been made with the help of this 3d printing technology other spare parts like raft tornado aircraft their radio covers and throttle guards this also made with the help of selective laser strain training and fuse deposition modeling all this kind of rapid prototyping technique now even in airborne warning control system that is awacs we know about this the armrest and end cap is been manufactured with help of this rapid prototyping technique we will be very happy to know that the defense research and development organization that is drdo and the indian air force they have now to purchase to two airbus 330 which will they convert into 360 degree long range capability airborne warning control system this airborne warning and control system not only tracks the aerial threats be it a fighter or a missile but also guides the counter response so this will be a very remarkable part for indian air force and indian defense will be strong enough to detect our enemies and also countering them now moving to some interesting parts like uavs unmanned air vehicles you can see air was four this is a good example of unmanned air vehicle a small sized pilotless aircraft the total part is been used with the help of additive layer manufacturing technique and this thor aircraft is a example is an example of futuristic aircraft technologies from 3d printing structure uh, parts they are integrating all the parts to make this entire uav so their motto is print me an airplane you can see by their motto they are printing whole airplane with the help of this 3d printing technology the initial thor version way approximately 21 kg and can fit a 4 meter by 4 meter square area now it is powered by 1.5 kilowatt electrically driven propeller and 90% of its structural components are 3d printed from plastic polyamide powder so you can see how this has been possible with the help of this rapid prototyping and 3d printing technique <clears throat> so this is really interesting who are there in final years they are doing project with the uh, they are making some uavs they can concentrate on this 3d printing areas they can make some useful parts with the help of this 3d printing because the complex geometry can be easily manufactured with this 3d printing technique and they can integrate all these parts to their uh, uavs their drones so that they are having a lightweight but good strength model so another example of aurora that is manufactured with the help of stratasys jet stratasys is another manufacturer who are manufacturing machines for this rapid prototyping technique to the printing machines so they are pioneer in their area so these are all areas where you can see in spacecraft also we are using this 3d printing technology or this rapid prototyping technology in case of courier sat 5a and courier sat 7 antenna supports is been made and then some crew modules and we can see lockheed a211 sorry rocket a21000 packing connector also be 
made with the help of this rapid prototyping technique and some nozzle parts some satellite supports so this kind of thing and you know there is a sense to you that kalam sat has been launched uh, in the name of uh, dr apj kalam that that kalam sat also having many parts made from this rapid prototyping additive manufacturing technology so whatever i am talking earlier the spacecraft crew module in tenjou 10 seats has been made with this rapid prototyping technique and some other thing like cst 100 structure so near about 6 600 3d printed parts are there in that crew module if you know about cst 100 the boeing cst 100 starliner it is crew space transportation system it is a reusable crew capsule manufactured by boeing as its participation in nasa's commercial crew development ccd program its primary purpose is to transport crew to the international space station and this orion this crew module also they are using this rapid prototyping technique to manufacture pressure vents for their crew module now it is very interesting to see how the tools these all the things are available in international space stations the fdm machine that is the fuel deposition modeling machine that has been used by the crew of this uh, astronauts of I international space station where they are manufacturing some range some caps some hexahedral socket some containers some threads with the help of this 3d printing technique because if they need some new thing or if they are just repairing some uh, part of their spacecraft or some part of their uh, international space station they need some hand tool for that thing and if they are lacking in hand tool they have no time or they will not wait for another uh, spacecraft to come to uh, to supply them some uh, these hand tools so why not they are they themselves Use this 3D printing technique, and they made these parts in space itself. So it is very interesting. The each and every part here is made in space itself with the help of this rapid manufacturing technology, rapid prototyping technology. Each of these parts is very interesting. They are making these parts. Astronauts are making these parts in space itself. Now another interesting thing is 100% 3D printed rocket. Is it possible? Yes, obviously. The answer is that. the relativity space focusing on its first rocket the company relativity space they are focusing on their first rocket that is tiran 1 tiran 1 rocket a small to medium sized vehicle being built with the relativity specialized stretch 3d printer they are having their own 3d printer that is specialized to the making of this rocket and it says their ceo says that it could eventually create and one rocket in less than 60 days with the help of this raw material they made a rocket within 2 months can you believe in this quite interesting so they are using their own engine also that is also 3d man 3d uh, manufactured engine rapid prototyping process using real engine that is their aeon one engine their first rocket tiran is powder uh, powered with liquid oxygen methane engine that is lox methane engine a on one when the complete will be capable of transporting a payload up to 1250 kg to lower earth orbit of 185 km and they can be extended up to a altitude of 1200 km per sun synchronous orbit and it will carry around 700 kg of weight by this time they are capable of carrying this kind of weight so think if you are having any doubt regarding the integrity regarding the strength of this 3d manufactured or this uh, rapid prototyping rockets so there is the answer they are capable enough to carry 700 kg and if they are they have in just 
advance some little further if they upgrade some little bit then they will be they will uh, they just they will be capable of just delivering around uh, 1250 kg of payload into the lower earth orbit so this is a tremendous landmark in 3d printing technology so as far as i discussed if i want to recap whatever the discussion for today's session then when we are talking about this rapid prototyping it deliver the lowest cost solution so low production rate and unique articles can be made as uh, as it, it uh, sometimes it takes some time to uh, to make some complex geometry that is not even possible in ca in case of our conventional or cnc machining technique but it is possible in this rapid prototyping where we can have some complex geometry and we can made our own customized part some home built tooling test related equipment of their craft mock ups prototype and interior spare parts and also the vital parts of the air crop propulsion system but the production rate rate can be uh, small if we are considering a bulk amount of production so that is the matter to be con uh, to be investigated whether we can make this process little bit faster in case of bulk production for a single unit production it is much more faster it is much more convenient but for a bulk production we have to consider the process how to increase the production rate and also it is having a good advantage to make some complex geometry within a less period of time so for that case it is very much widely accepted now lowering the by to fly ratio if we consider this by by to fly ratio i have to elaborate further what is it actually so before going to the by to fly ratio we have to consider we have to consider why not we can just made the whole structure of the aircraft with the help of this rapid prototyping technique because it is highly optimized low weight and uh, less inventory cost it can be made and as it has by sorry low by to fly ratio it is very convenient to use so this is the description for by to fly ratio the gate the amount of waste in process so in aerospace engineering all our aerospace engineers they just calculate the amount of waste in this process by this by to fly ratio this is the ratio between the weight of the material used to make a compo component and the weight of the component itself that means when in conventional machining technique we are using a metal block and we are subtracting some parts from that block and then we are getting the final product so the initial metal block to the final product that ratio is known as by to fly ratio where in conventional system that by to fly ratio is more than 10 because much more amount of material is been wasted in the machining process or the conventional machining technique but in case of our this rapid prototyping this by to fly ratio for titanium parts from 40 to it will reduce to uh, 42 is to 1 to 3 is to 1 if we just explain it further that means let us ex uh, take an example of titanium part from a titanium part we are making a product so around uh, 40 40 uh, parts or 40 amount of that titanium total titanium block if it is represented by 40 40% 40 from that 40 we are getting 1% okay from that 40 if that 40 is that uh, the total part from that 40 we are getting 1% and in case of our rapid prototyping technique if we are using 3% or the three part we are using we are getting one part so just to explain that thing 
if i represent all this thing with the help of gram so for the titanium parts in conventional machining technique if we are using 40 gram of titanium parts we will be producing only 1 gram of component from that 40 gram of titanium parts so 39 gram will be wasted and in case of this rapid prototyping technique how the wastage is been reduced you can see we will be using 3 gram to produce 1 gram of component so the sudden decrement of that wastage which is directly reducing the by to ply ratio of uh, rapid prototyping technique parts so if we just proceed to some structures we can see how the weight is been reduced the conventional machine parts this conventional bracket you can see uh, 330 g of aluminum 7075 has been used and then it has been reduced to final design titanium of 191 g of titanium titanium ti al6b4 alloy we can see how much reduction in the weight itself and for other parts also we can see how this weight is been reduced we can if we just consider this graph we can see we are having some parameters like in extract in direction weight stiffness and then maximum bolt force and maximum stress we can see how in original or in conventional machining process how the weight is been reduced to around 60% weight reduction so it will be around 60 or 70% weight reduction so it will be around 40% or 30% weight for the optimized uh, rapid prototype parts and the stiffness also do not that much vary the stiffness remains same some maximum bolt force will be reduced in just 10% and you can see the maximum stress because the stress is nothing but the internal resistance to the external force if internal resistance to deform to the external force applied so we can see the maximum stress how this has been reduced so how the product is getting more strength with the help of this rapid prototyping technique these are the example of some other highly optimized structure which have been manufactured with the help of this rapid prototyping technique you can see the weight is been reduced from 1000 pound to 770 pound so this weight reduction and also the part reduction see initially there has been 654 parts but now they are using only 14 parts to make this structure in case of rapid prototyping technique and before they are using 2600 attachments and nowadays they are using only 350 attachments so how much reduction of the part how much reduction of the attachment and how much reduction in the weight you can see in highly optimal structure of rapid prototyping these are all the example of this other highly optimized structure you can see this micro stress structure the struct structure is very much useful to carry the diagonal loads and to distribute the load all over the structure so if we just produce this micro stress this is a current trend in research the producing of this micro stress or the stress or this honeycomb stress which will give a good distribution of load and thus make the structure more stronger now we have to think what is the next step why don't we print a whole airplane with the help of this rapid prototyping technique but the answer is that see in case of cost we can compromise that thing but we have to consider the safety for that we have to go to the next slide because the safety is the utmost consideration in case of space application and in case of aviation so there are some regulations how do you ensure the safety for that we have to consider part 25 we know far is nothing but federal aviation regulation and these rules are prescribed by federal aviation administration and all aviation activities 
is regulated by FAR, and this FAR, this regulation, is a part of Title 14 of the Code of Federal Regulation, that is CFR. Here, that CFR 25.603 and 25.605, they describe the material must be tested, fabricated, must be consistent, and new method must be must be tested. So all these certifications is required to produce all the aircraft all the structural component of a aircraft so for that reason we have to consider and we have to put our effort in research area so that how to get that certification of this rapid prototype technology using parts so for that in cfr 25.303 and cfr 25.307 and 601 we know the structure must be strong so for that to to have a more stronger structure or stiffer structure we have to consider some new material that some new material will be taken in consideration so that we can integrate this kind of material in our rapid prototyping technology to produce the structural parts of our aircraft so the challenge is that the certification so research is a very much needed thing in this area i just invite all the participant if they also interested they can do some research they can propose their idea and they put forward their idea and they come up with new idea so that the certification part can be managed you can get the certification part the certification the good certification the product certification from the authority like pa uh, and also our from our dgc also uh, in india so that we can apply those parts in the total aircraft manufacturing process so these are some process dependence what we just have seen in uh, that 3d manufactured product so this graph basically shows how the edge build part are having low young modulus that is not withstanding that much uh, stress but if we are applying some amount of heat treatment if we are doing paneling you can see we are getting some more uh, uh, good in endurance value and also we are getting some more stiffness some more strength in those parts so the additive manufacturing process is quite good this is our rapid prototyping process is quite good and the product is being made with the help of this process are also excellent but if we want to increase the excellency and the excellence of that part we have to go for the heat treatment further uh, to improve mechanical properties of these parts now if we just move to the next slide we can see there are some effect of surface roughness in case of our additive manufacturing process or in case of rapid prototyping process the rough surface tends to have more fatigue so we have to further go for fiber polishing or some mechanical polishing process that can be carried out as in the first day of this webinar series i have discussed about the micro polishing technique that can be employed in our and uh, 3d printed parts to minimize the effect of fatigue so this is the data from research what we get that when we are having a part that is edge printed part that is having low life fatigue life but as soon as we just polish the polish that thing we just give a good surface finish to the product the fatigue lag is been drastically increased so this graph also shows how the polished surface like chemically or mechanically really works how it will increase the fatigue life or the strength of the part that has been used in our crafts so see this this study this research study you can see the fatigue strain of chemically polished gear that 30 to 35% increase as compared to non treated 
or non policed gear so this is a good example of how the micro machining is been applied to the 3d printed part so that we are getting some enhanced mechanical properties and some excellent uh, improvisation properties of our 3d printed part and see the strength of short pinned gear so we can we can just apply the short pinning process to enhance for T to fifty-four percent of increment of the spring. So these are all the research outcome in which we are working currently. You can see in this graph, I have mentioned no surface treatment. This thing are having lower number of uh, fatigue life, so that the fatigue life is not that much. So. as much as we are applying that came pro policing chemical policing then the the increasing fatigue life the endurance limit in increase is increased and then when we are just uh, combining short pinning and electro policing then short pinning and chemical policing that sp and cp that is short pinning and chemical policing that means we are getting some much amount of endurance life endurance limit for that part that means it will increase the fatigue life of that part <clears throat> now the another futuristic approach to develop some 3d printed carbon fiber we should consider this thing as our research because this area research is currently going on and we are having numerous numbers of carbon fiber or some bio fiber fiber impregnated carbon carbon fibers which has been used and they are having good stiffness and good tensile strength and they are having some stiff uh, some good structural properties so likewise we are having some fibers like glass fibers cables as you know they are strong enough and here i can see the research output of our research in they are we are just comparing pla pla is polylactic acid in linear aliphatic thermoplastic polyester that is a polylactic acid pla okay it is derived from 100% it is derived from 100% renewable source this polylactic acid that is pla it is linear aliphatic thermoplastic so 100% renewable source from the 100% renewable source we are just getting this polylactic acid and this jfrtp this is nothing but jute fiber reinforced thermoplastic and then cfrtp is nothing but carbon fiber reinforced thermoplastic so we can see it is a comparative study we have done where we find that this carbon fiber reinforced uh, thermoplastic is having good tensile strength and also is having a good young modulus so it can withstand a good amount of strain at a higher value of stress so this is our research funding and also it is not that much surprising thing we have found out this thing and uh, dmrl decent defense meteorological laboratory limited drdo they are also doing research in this area so i am requesting all the participants if they are also interested they can uh contact me in the mail i have given in my slide and you can contact uh, moa mr moa joshan also for my official mail you can mail me your idea that uh, we can collaboratively do some research in this area uh to just make some uh, carbon fibers or some bio impregnated carbon fiber that can be used for our rapid prototyping technique so that we can get some more stronger and stiffer uh 3d prototype part rapid prototype part uh, in our near future so as a conclusion i want to tell about some case study see you can see in this picture this is a satellite frame this is a titanium made satellite frame so this is made by engineers of airbus and defense and space division of us so they are just doing their research current research in this area 
and they found they are having two concern regarding the manufacturing of this kind of satellite frame first thing is that the bracket must be affixed securely to the satellite body and the second thing is that the main function of the bracket is to mitigate the vast temperature fluctuation because in space there is a vast temperature fluctuation so bracket can also have the potential to mitigate that temperature fluctuation so for that case they if they, they have a thought of making that same thing in conventional metal cutting process but that does not meet the requirement of that air was defense and space as the design limitation prevent optimization of the weight of the component and the stresses so rapid prototype technology was selected as an alternative production method the bracket is built up to successive layers of metal powder that are melted and hardened by laser beam that is selective laser sintering process and titanium is still usable as it, it is it is a tested material and it possesses a good mechanical property and high temperature uh, withstand property and it has a good thermal and uh, mechanical stability in high temperatures and uh, dimensional stability also it, it possesses now this additive manufacturing has two main advantage that is we are not only able to optimize the design but also can produce them in one piece so this single piece manufacturing is a very much lucrative idea and lucrative feature of this additive manufacturing technology or rapid prototyping technology so if we conclude with this result they are getting this result like utilizing the premium material with little waste as we know the thing i have discussed that buy to fly ratio of this additive manufacturing uh, product rapid rapid prototype product is very much less so and also the part consideration consolidation that means fewer man hours required for assembly we need less time to assemble that is the another advantage and the optimized geometry can optimize the geometry to get the higher uh, performance of that material and that light weight of the component that enhance the fuel save over the life of the project so these are all the the findings of their research and this additive manufacturing brought measurable benefit to critical aspect of the project without requiring cuts to be made elsewhere so there were no compromise something engineers don't get to hear very often so in addition cost saving in bracket production amount to more 20% and weight was reduced by 300 g only for those brackets can you imagine so these are all the good latest just you know, landmark type findings of this rapid prototyping technique what we can get from this modern manufacturing technique of this rapid motor prototype so these are all reference which ever i have taken i also take some reference from some research work done by drdo as i have a connection with them for this regard and i also mention some research work of our labs of our university and also some research done by iit kharagpur i want to uh, just uh thank them and i on, want to uh, just uh, just convey my regards to iiestc food because they have just helped me a lot in this research area uh, by providing some essential tools for this research like scanning electron microscopy and nano indentation machines for measuring the hardness nano hardness machine so these are all uh, they have provided me So for that, I extend my heartiest uh, regards to them, and I just very much. Uh, <clears throat> so I want to thank all of you for your patience hearing, and just to for current scenario of this pandemic, I want all just keep social distance and use masks and maintain social hygiene. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. I hope this session also had given good understanding on rapid prototyping to our students.
as our audience knows we are conducting quiz after each session for providing the certificates mentioning their obtain marks in those certificates as reported few got some trouble in taking the quiz in last session we have resolved it and are in touch with them all so if anyone is facing any kind of technical issue or any kind of uh, error while uh, taking the quiz they can contact us on support at the rate team2020.rf.gd or you can also reach me directly at ceo at the rate team2020.rf.gd and if you want to suggest anything to our valuable speaker or ask him for any support in research area you can also contact us and we will be providing his details in our uh, in our forms now on the behalf of our team 2020 i want to extend my thanks to professor a vivekananda for organizing this event we will be having him in the third as well as the last session of the webinar with some great stuffs till then stay safe stay connected and keep learning thank you very much team 2020